his uh, his granddaughter had married. <laughs> and I confess myself to be one of the whole who will lamp the suppression of the branch of the annals which relates to the author himself and his part. For I am persuaded with some better judges that they, they would have afforded great pleasure as well instruction of the world in their entire form. Now this is Dr. Morton's dedication. It's pretty big. I try to highlight some of the things that were important. Again, this is on Google Books. Um, it gives a it gives an account of Bolster Wetlock's genealogy, but doesn't go into Dr. Morton's anywhere. Go figure. <laughs> then here is notes upon the king's writ, and in the beginning, Dr. Morton does a very lengthy. Um, introduction and kind of interjects a little bit of his opinion on constitutional law. This is just basically a um, list of notes I had. This 1770 is, in close you'll find a most extraordinary case, transmitted by Dr. Lyons. Um, Okay, <laughs> this this has got to be one of the more remarkable. <laughs> pieces of work I've ever read. There is a lady who swallowed some pins, which were afterwards discharged at her shoulder. <laughs> Imagine swallowing a sewing pin coming out of your shoulder. But she had various uh, different problems, and I think they, at one point, also resorted to electrocution therapy, I'm not sure. And uh, this is all these four pages, basically, is his account of what happened. Um, I think it has something to do with the museum. Not, not the procedure, but fact that the article was written to Dr. Charles Martin may have some, some of the museum. Okay. <clears throat> Here is something I was mentioning the other day. I didn't know where Hackney was. Well, I found out that it's near London. This is a, a letter written in 1790. This is probably about nine years before Dr. Mort died. About a year before uh, his, second, his known second wife, probably his second wife, uh, Lady Savile died. We don't know who wrote this. This is <coughs> included in a book, but it doesn't really touch that way. I really would like to see what Dr. Morton, Dr. Morton's letter said. This refers to Dr. Morton. Um, some, someone wanted to know a little bit more about how foundling children were treated and was... You know, implying they were neglected, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Here is <clears throat> a report on the transit of Venus, 1761. Some mathematical equations related to that, <clears throat> all written in Latin for whatever reason. JSTOR is working with the Royal Society to digitize and make these results um, published for historical reasons. Oh, and later on, again, Pierce Morton, his grandson, was working at the Royal Observatory down in Cape of Good Hope, helping to find some planets. And as a student of George, I think it's Airy, Professor Airy, I got that right. Um, his grandson may have had a hand in discovering one of the planets. Maybe if I remember, maybe it was Neptune. It wasn't Pluto. Pluto was discovered by people in Arizona, as far as I remember. <coughs> now, this happens to be in the um, <coughs> National, I think that, I, the Australian National Library. I got the Mu National Museum of Australia. And this is uh, an instrument that would have been used to record <laughs> different observations. Um, regarding the transit of Venus here. This is the letter that was actually written to petition the king to fund uh, <coughs> the, um, the study of the transit of Venus. And 
I don't know. Was he sec was Dr. Charles Martin's secretary at the time? And if he was, is this his writing? Who knows? Here is definitely a letter written back to Dr. Charles Morton by Captain Cook. And he is transcribed on this web page. Um, Science in the South Seas, if you look at that subject, they'll probably you'll probably find what you look what you're looking for if you're interested in this kind of thing. So basically, yes, Dr. Charles Morton was at least involved and encouraging to collecting information that would advance science at least, and who knows anything beyond that. Also here is some correspondence that I got out of some archive that was transcribed, uh, the, the, at least the summaries were transcribed, they came off the UK, UK archives, the originals aren't there, and <coughs> here is some correspondence between Thomas Robinson, uh, ambassador at Madrid, and Charles Morton, and uh, Dr. Charles Morton was trying to encourage um, Mrs. Morton to grant them. Refers to astro astronomical observations made at Leiden. Hmm. Leiden? In the year 1776 by Mr. de Saint Miguel. Thanks his lordship for transmitting the same, and as his lordship will thank Mr. de Carton in the name for presenting it. Thanks his lordship also for additional favor for procuring the museum. Three volumes of astronomical observations which appear to have been published in the three preceding years. <coughs> and also, he in his next letter he writes, uh, actually he wrote before that, He's uh, he regrets having to trouble a great man but states he is <coughs> liable to importunity from the most unexpected quarters. Uh, refers to pittance of Consulship of Cartagena obtained through his friendship with Lord Rockford. This appointment is quoted as being amenable to Granton's orders, blah, blah, blah. Wishes to be permitted to pledge himself to grant them with the assurance Mr. Sherratt may be trusted. The utmost confidence can assure both firm and trust in our current situation. I'm not sure exactly what this is about. If his lordship can make his present pursuit in any degree advantageous, justice very deserving though hitherto unfortunate man he is sincere in his efforts to serve Mr. Sherrod and is pleased to hear from him he informs that his aunt is aware of his present employ and has directed him to make her tender of best complaints now that is very odd but this this was this second one was actually attributed to be this last one down here from 1776 was attributed to being written by John Morton. I've never even mentioned I've never even heard of Charles Morton mentioning his aunt's name. This is this stack here all comes from the Royal Society's um, arch archives. You can look up members of the Royal Society and see what they've done. A lot of this again has to do with correspondence with the transit of Venus. In fact, this is here is a little. I have I already have a copy. I'm going to keep a second. I have so many papers. Uh, here is an abstract of that. This is a letter on. <coughs> NASA is interested in its work. <laughs> And this is, yeah, this is the lockjaw and paralysis thing that was there. This is another letter to Dr. Charles Morton um, from Reverend John Swinton. And this this basically had something to do with um, the little coins this guy would come across on whatever island he was on. Okay, I should stop and try to regroup and figure out if I can get a cohesive message. <coughs>